When it comes to sports games, the Switch has had a fair few bases covered already. In terms of football, we've got two FIFA games, as well as some more arcadey titles such as the classic SNK Super Sidekick games. Basketball has the 2K games as well as NBA Playgrounds. American football is underrepresented with no Madden game thus far, but there is the Mutant League football game as well as Golden NES Oldie Tecmo Bowl if you are subscribed to the Nintendo Online service. Baseball has got a few RBI games, whether you want them or not. And then you have motorsport management and some extreme sports with things like Trials Rising and a number of other motorbike games. There are even snooker and cricket games on the horizon. But for all this, ice hockey on the other hand has been a no-show. Well, Super Blood Hockey is looking to throw its helmet into the rink. But is it worth a purchase? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to Digerati for the review copy and now Let's find out. Super Blood Hockey's main gameplay hook is its franchise mode. This sees you enlisted as the coach of a new team eager to join the futuristic Blood Sports League. After donating a kidney to pay for admission, you must go about forming a team, choosing the nation that you want to represent, giving the team a name and recruiting some players. Now to do this, you recruit inmates from a local prison. Using the small amount of money that you initially start with, you must buy enough players to make a team. That's the five that you need for a full team, including your goalkeeper. And you may also want to consider getting a couple of reserves in case your team suffers any injuries, as failure to fulfill a fixture due to a lack of players can lead to termination of your contract. Once you have a few players, you set them training tasks, such as treadmill work to improve skating, working on a punch bag to improve their brawling skills or taking a shower to reduce injury risk. You can also tweak what the player eats in order to make them put on or lose weight depending on the role that you want them to fulfill in your team. Sleeping in the bed will cause a day to pass and checking the calendar on the wall will allow you to play a match once game day arrives. This probably all sounds a lot more in depth than it really is and after a while, once I had the training regime set up, etc, I found myself sleeping until the next game day quite often. Once into a game, Super Blood Hockey is an arcade experience at heart in terms of the basic gameplay. There are no rules to remember and no penalties to incur. It's a case of score more than the opposition by any means necessary. As the word blood in the title would imply, this is the sort of game where not only is injuring the opposition possible, it's encouraged. As well as being able to body check opponents and knock them to the ground, bump into one of the opposition players a few times and fight mode will initiate. However, this is not gloves off, one on one, punch until someone falls over. This is an all out brawl involving every player in the rink bar the two goalies. The team with the last man standing wins the fight and there is a possibility that the team that loses the brawl could lose a player through injury. This could be for a few seconds while he writhes around on the floor in agony or in some cases could result in death and the team playing with a man less. That's why you needed a fair sized squad with a few reserves to come in or at least money in the bank to buy another player should you need one as a matter of urgency. Playing in and winning games will bring that aforementioned prize money in and you will also see your players stats receive a boost after each match too. The AI of your teammates is a little questionable at times and there were a few occasions where I was trying to draw the opposition's goalie out so I could lay off a pass to my colleague in space only for them to follow me rather than peel off into the gaping space as I had hoped. Goalkeepers also seem almost superhuman in some games too, saving anything and everything you throw at them. You need to pass often to try and find a way through. The controls in Super Blood Hockey are very straightforward. Movement is handled with the left stick as is aiming your passes to teammates and shots at goal. You press B to pass and Y to shoot. Holding down the Y button before shooting will charge up the shot, allowing you to unleash a more powerful shot than you otherwise would. Tapping the L button will allow you to switch between your players and the A button enables you to body check an opponent. Movement wise, the game replicates the feeling of inertia that sliding along on ice would present. You need to really push into your current line of movement in order to change direction. This takes a couple of games to get used to and you may find yourself traveling past the puck a few times when trying to retrieve it before you become fully accustomed to the physics at play. The passing seems a little hit and miss at times too. Having to aim with the left stick whilst also using this to move can lead to a few passes going astray. 
especially when you are trying to pass the puck around at a decent pace in order to create space. Other than franchise mode, there are a few other game modes available too. There is the exhibition mode, there is a tournament mode, which is your standard cup knockout affair, where you progress to the next round after each win. And finally, there is a challenge mode, which contains a total of five challenges, including having to defeat a team with twice the number of players you have, or winning a match while only being able to control one player on your team, rather than being able to switch between each member. Successfully completing these challenges will unlock certain options that you can then use in subsequent matches. These include being able to change the friction of the puck or the weight of your players. Super Blood Hockey is playable in local multiplayer with up to four players. You can play on the same team or against each other, and having tried this in two-player mode, it's a lot of fun. Finally, there is an online leaderboard for the number of wins that you have achieved across all game modes, it's not quite as compelling as something say like a fast lap leadership board in a racing game, but it's here nonetheless. Franchise mode was a pleasant surprise and the core gameplay is classic arcade fun and receives 15 out of 20, whilst controls receive 14 out of 20. Super Blood Hockey uses a pixel art style with chibi-like characters. They're reminiscent of the characters found in the Kunio Kun or River City Ransom games or the footballers in the old World Cup game on the NES from way back when. The blood and gore is handled in an over-the-top and tongue-in-cheek way. Going out of the cup, for example, will see your characters meet a grisly end, such as being minced into sausage meat. I'm so glad I'm a vegetarian. When turning the game on initially, you are met with a CRT TV bordering the main image with the futuristic skyline that houses this new dystopian blood leak in view. You'd be forgiven for thinking you'd put Streets of Rage on by accident. The visuals look clean and crisp, and the aesthetic does suit the arcade nature of the gameplay. It brings back memories of NES classics Ice Hockey and Konami's Blades of Steel, albeit the graphical style is certainly closer to 16-bit than it is to 8-bit. Music is a chiptune affair and comes from chiptune artist Sean Daly. There are a few different tunes that play during the action, and they are all quite fast-paced to suit the gameplay. They are on quite a short loop, so it's nice that there are a couple of them. They generally change at the end of each period of the game, and some of it's actually very catchy. The sound effects are as meaty as you would expect, and music and sound effects can be turned down separately from one another in the options menu. Visuals receive 14 out of 20, whereas the audio receives 15 out of 20. Super Blood Hockey costs £13.49 or $14.99 and the inclusion of the franchise mode goes a long way to justifying this price. The other big factor is the four player local multiplayer and I can see the arcade nature appealing to a fair few people, making this a good choice when friends come round, either cooperatively or competitively. The franchise mode isn't as deep as it initially appears, but it's nice to see developers trying to add something a little different and in some respects it reminded me of another Switch game, Punch Club with the sports fiend game with minor RPG elements. Value receives 15 out of 20. To conclude, it's been a long wait, but there is finally an ice hockey game on the Switch. It's arcadey, lacks the rules and real names that some might crave, and is wrapped in a curious ultra-violent, but at the same time bizarrely charming package. But above all that, it's a lot of fun. Super Blood Hockey receives a switch up score of 73%. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Is this the hockey game you've been waiting for, or do you need something a bit more realistic when it comes to games like this? Please do let us know in the comments below. A quick thank you to all of our Patreons, again for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take it easy, and until the next one, happy gaming.